Okay, so what makes these better, in my opinion, than Stripe payment links? Well, we're in the API developer documentation here for the payment link API. And the two real benefits, I think, the main two benefits, are number one, the price money element. So therefore, we can pass in into our quick pay element of the of the request the value and with stripe payment links as far as i'm aware you have to have them assigned to a product so therefore you can't dynamically create you can't dynamically create the amount that you're going to charge it has to be set to a product which is already pre-set up and then the other one is in the checkout options section which is not the part of that request but it's you can add it in and that is when we're constructing our redirect URL. So with our redirect URL, so on a successful checkout, our customers will be diverted, directed to our redirect URL, which is quite normal. Obviously, you do the same with Stripe. However, in this one, we can pass our own parameters. We're constructing our own redirect URL dynamically. We can pass whatever parameters into that we want basically whereas within stripe you do get a set different set of parameters that you can pass into it and that's where having to use the foreign data wrappers in certainly in postgres to match payments up and get everything working in the right way is a bit of a fiddle whereas this you can pass in exactly the parameters you want it doesn't say you can there but you definitely can and basically it's so much easier to match the payment that's being made to a customer or a sort of an element within your app. So they're the two main reasons I think this is better. I'll now go on to explain how I've got this set up and how to make the uh, make the request to the uh, to the Square API. Doing this using Flutterflow and Superbase. Uh, if you're from a different tech stack, I would guess you can apply it to what you do. It's just that all the principles will be the same. You just have to adjust it to uh, to suit yourselves. If you do use Flutter with Base, obviously the um, the code, as always, will be available to download in the link below. And while you're at it, also a link below will is a referral link for Square. Now, if you're not signed up to Square, you're going to need to do so, obviously, to try this out. Now, the referral link is one that if you're in the UK, you will be able to get a thousand pounds worth of transactions without any fees now if you're not in the uk i've no idea if it works i don't think it does but obviously it's worth a try and you've got nothing to lose with that with that being said let's get cracking the first thing we're going to do is run through the flutterflow custom action here which calls the postgres function within superbase that makes the http request to the square api this is being done using the framework of a restaurant app so the sort of thing we go in sit your table scan the qr code place your order and pay and then order goes to the kitchen obviously and they know where to send it uh so that is the information that is being passed around when i'm explaining this and to start off with we have a remote procedure call called call payment and we're passing in the cost the table number the guest name and our internal transaction id and we are returning a JSON. If we go to Superbase, we have got a table called orders. So we are taking all the information. We are just creating Flutterflow and we are creating a new record in the orders table. And the important one here is paid. Its default is set to false. So when the new record is, is created, it would come up as false and then so therefore it is not a, it's not been paid basically so we've created an order but nobody's paid for it at this point so our remote procedure call that we're calling this is the one we are calling called call payment this one we're calling from from our flutterflow app and we're passing in as you can see the cost the table number the guest name and the internal transaction id we are then going to grab our square api key from the vault and then we are selecting the function create payment and we're passing in the cost secret table number the guest name and the internal transaction id so basically 
all of those plus the secret are being passed into our create payment function which is this one and this is really the uh, the the most important bit so you'll probably recognize this if you watched any of my http api requests at all this is literally the same as all the others um why change something that works i suppose so we are using the square api for the payment link so let's go back to the square payment link page so in our request body we have got the api endpoint we've got the type which is post uh, we've got obviously sending our access token and the content type application json that's all usual stuff now the idem potency key basically it says if you don't provide one you can you don't have to it just treats it as each request is independent and i have chosen not to do that i haven't really looked into that in any great detail there is a link there to do so uh, i probably should do and i will do and then we are going into the quick pay section where we are adding the the name the price money and the location id so the location id is part of your square account setup process and you are assigned a default one when you sign up so simply it is your default location id which i'll go to um at the end just to show you where to get that from uh, and where to get your api keys from as well and then you that's your location id there and then you come into the options section so we are using some of these. Do you want to allow tipping? Yes or no? Obviously, it's a restaurant app in this instance. So we've got yes. We're not using any custom fields. Uh, the redirect URL is already is kind of the key to this. So yes, we're using that. And enable coupons. I think I've got that. So you can um, add in like a um, a discount coupon. So we've got that enabled. So let's go back and look at the request and show that. So first thing we're doing is constructing our redirect URL. So we have got a success page. So it redirects, redirects the success page. So what happens is on a successful payment, it gets redirected. So that's why we know this works because it, if it doesn't, it doesn't redirect on a failed payment. It's, a, it's like the on success redirect to here. And we are passing in the table number, the guest ID, if you remember to know if they're a logged in user, so we can assign it or not. And importantly, the transaction ID. That is how we're constructing our redirect URL. And this is what I was saying. We can add these parameters to it as part of the redirect URL, which means we don't have to mess around with foreign data wrappers, API queries, anything else. We're just saying we need this information to be able to identify this payment and assign it to a table or a user or whatever we want to do and know that it's been paid. And we can do that all within our re re redirect URL. We don't have to use any external, any external services to do that. And then we're creating the using the JSON build object to create the to create the request, obviously. So we're just calling it the name food order. And then the price money section, we've got the amount and the currency. The currency, I think if you leave blank, it is local to the user. So you can just leave that blank. I think it just selects whatever currency is local to the user. I've obviously put in GBP. Uh, the location ID again. I will go over and I'll show you where you get the API keys from. And then in the options, as you can see, I've added allow tipping true and enable loyalty true. And the redirect URL I am taking from the variable we've got set there. And then all that then goes into the standard request. So we've got the type post, we've got the endpoint. We've got the secret, which we've pulled from the vault. Then we've got the type application JSON, and then we're passing in the content. And what we're doing at the end here, we are extracting from the, re so we get a JSON response. And we are extracting rather than sending it back. So if you see, go back to the, this is the full response uh, with all the line items. Obviously we've only got one line item because we're only send in one one payment request but we've got all this other stuff but what we are actually doing within the superbase function we're extracting the url and the order id now 
the order ID, we are writing to the database in from our Flutterflow app and the URL obviously is where the user gets redirected to. So these are the values that return into Flutterflow. So therefore we are only returning out of all the response details we get, we're only returning the important stuff to the URL and the order ID, which is the order ID created by Square's payment system, not the internal one we've created. We're actually not really using this to be honest with you, but it just keeps everything lined up. So if we head back to the table, we've got our order ID. That's the order ID that we are receiving from the Square API call and our internal transaction ID is this one. As you can see when I've been messing around with this, I have up the character count. Um, so we can then, if so then we do know that that order, if we want to need to do any manual checks, for instance, we can know that that order ID and that transaction ID are assigned together, basically. Okay, so that's how we're setting up the request to the Square API. So what I'll do now, I'll head over to Square itself, show you where to get the API keys and the location code, and then we'll go on, do a quick test, and then we're done. So head over to Square Up, you'll need the developer dashboard. So in your account section over here, you'll have an option. One will be the seller dashboard, and you can have the developer dashboard in there as well. So you need the developer dashboard. Now you have the applications page. It'll be blank if you're just uh, logging in for the first time, obviously. So you need to create an app and then it'll ask you to name your app and go through a few steps just to get it running. You'll get this page and you've got sandbox and production API keys. So uh, obviously I've got the sandbox ones running here and then that's the access token. That's the value that we're placing in the Superbase Vault, and that is the one that is being passed as our secret. So that is we're passing it in there, and we are sending it as the bearer there. So that is your sandbox token, or indeed your production one. And then locations on the left hand side here, click on locations, and this is the code. Now, I didn't put 10 Downing Street, I'm yeah, definitely, that's obviously what, what it defaulted to for some reason. Um, the location ID, that's the value there. That is going in there as part of the API request. So that's where you get that information from. This is actually dead straightforward to do. And so I'll go and do the test now and you'll see, we create an order, press the button, go to the payment page, and it's uh, and then get the redirection. So uh, yeah, we're we'll going to test that now and we'll see if it works. Okay, so I have got a shopping basket here with some items in its uh, restaurant app. As I was saying, that's what I was using for this test purposes. And basically, if we click on go to checkout, and then what we do, we get diverted to the sandbox. So this is obviously all done with our sandbox and that's the order ID and the URL obviously now the preview link this is what the checkout looks like as you can see I've got I've sent the information for food order we've sent the value and we've got tips enabled and the coupons thing so our user can can pay their bill so if we just click next do a test payment unfortunately the one downside this does have compared to Stripe is that Stripe, obviously they give you some fake card details for testing your payments, which is a much better system than this, but it is what it is. And then do the test payment and then check out complete. And as you can see, that's our, that's our link that we've created, our redirect link. So we've got the Flutterflow app URL, got table number the guest name in this case it was a guest not a a, a a user and then our internal transaction id so then and that's where our customer gets ready so i can click on that and it's going to be a huge screen because it's actually set for mobile but um obviously 
in this instance that's not actually the case so that's that and if I now go to super base we've got our new order and then our internal transaction ID and we've got the page set to true because that's what it does when the transaction is a success and goes to the redirect URL here so that is um, basically it that's how they work it's um, pretty good I, I just prefer the whole method of doing this than what you get with Stripe I think in terms of using payment links which can't be used for every scenario I appreciate but when you can use them I think this is actually like I said right at the beginning it's pretty powerful it is actually quite simple to use and hopefully it's something you can go forward and use in your apps say feel free to try the referral link say if you're in the UK you will get a thousand pound of free transactions and so will I just for transparency um, in the rest of the world I'm not sure you're more than welcome to try it and just see what happens other than that go to uh, Square website and just sign up as normal and uh, yeah hopefully that works and I will uh, speak to you in the next video if you enjoyed that please consider the like and subscribe as always and I'll see you next time